Welcome to our episode today. Have you ever thought yes to sports, but how do I do it right? Then you're in the right place. Today, we will comprehensively and definitively answer that question. Exercise is one of the fundamental pillars of a long and healthy life, comparable to good stress management, sufficient sleep, a balanced diet, and nurturing social connections. It's not about following extreme training plans or overburdening your body. The focus is on training smartly and sustainably to fully reap the health benefits without placing unnecessary strain on your body. Regular exercise not only improves your appearance, but also plays a crucial role in reducing the risk of numerous diseases. It strengthens the cardiovascular system, supports mental health, and contributes overall to enhancing well-being. To maximize these health benefits, it's important to find a balanced relationship between physical activity, rest, and a healthy diet. Only then can your body remain strong and healthy in the long run. Let's talk about the so-called fat burning zone, which lies between 60 and 70% of your maximum heart rate. This zone is a concept that describes the heart rate range at which your body most effectively uses fat as an energy source. Many people mistakenly believe that fat burning only begins after a certain time of training. But in reality, your body starts burning fat as soon as you become active. You can think of it like an oven that starts heating as soon as you turn it on, meaning energy production from fat begins right away. However, when you train in this range of about 60% of your maximum heart rate, your body derives approximately 60% of the needed energy from its fat reserves, while the remaining 40% comes from carbohydrates. If you increase the intensity of your workout to about 75%, this ratio changes so that your body now relies more on carbohydrates. These biochemical processes are not only fascinating, but also highly efficient, as your body constantly adjusts which energy source it uses to function optimally. To determine your personal fat burning zone, you can apply a simple rule of thumb that suggests subtracting your age from 220 to estimate your maximum heart rate. Then take 60 to 70% of that value and you have your individual zone, at least approximately, since a rule of thumb is usually not entirely precise. If you want a more accurate determination, you can perform a self-test or use a fitness watch to help monitor your heart rate during exercise. To measure your maximum heart rate with a fitness watch, you should first ensure that the watch is correctly set up and connected to a heart rate sensor. Start with a warm-up by jogging lightly or moving gently for a few minutes to prepare your muscles. Then, you can do two to three easy sprints to further prepare your body for the upcoming exertion. For the actual test, sprint three times for a maximum of 80 to 100 meters. Make sure to run as fast as possible in the second and third sprints, pushing yourself as if you've never run so hard before. Your fitness watch will record your heart rate during these sprints. After the final sprint, you can check the recorded data to determine your maximum heart rate. This method gives you a more precise estimate of your maximum heart rate, which you can then use to tailor your training sessions and optimize fat burning. Now, let's get to the exciting part, high-intensity interval training compared to moderate endurance training. Both training methods offer numerous benefits, and depending on your individual goals, you can achieve success with either approach. High-intensity interval training, often abbreviated as HIT, is like a fast sprinter among training methods. It significantly boosts your metabolism and creates a remarkable afterburn effect. This afterburn effect, also known as EPOC, excess post-exercise oxygen consumption, means that your body continues to burn calories even after you've finished working out while you're already resting. However, it's important to moderate this as one HIIT heat workout per week is enough to benefit from the positive effects. A typical HIIT workout could consist of one minute of sprinting, followed by two minutes of light jogging, repeating this sequence about six to eight times. Although it sounds simple, the intensity quickly becomes noticeable. Another advantage of HIIT is that it increases your VO2 max, which describes the maximum oxygen uptake of your body. A higher VO2 max is an indicator of better fitness. You don't need to worry about the exact numbers because what's important is that HIT improves your fitness. 
In contrast, moderate training works like an efficient combustion engine. This engine uses fuel optimally to deliver consistent performance over long distances without wasting excessive energy. Similarly, moderate training helps your body effectively use fat as an energy source. After about 30 to 45 minutes of moderate exercise, you enter the so-called fat melting zone, where your body burns fat particularly efficiently. During this training, the number of your mitochondria increases, which are the powerhouses of your cells and responsible for increased energy production. Additionally, moderate training promotes the growth of capillaries, the small blood vessels that better supply your muscles with oxygen. This creates a high-speed network for oxygen supply in your body, further enhancing your performance. Another concept we'd like to recommend is the talking pace. Imagine jogging at a pace where you can still talk comfortably, meaning you're moving at a relaxed rhythm. This pace is your ideal standard run as it promotes endurance while minimizing the risk of injury. Frequent runs at a talking pace are more effective than completing a marathon once a week. When you regularly run at this moderate pace, your body doesn't prepare for a famine, which often leads to calorie storage, but rather works more evenly and efficiently. A slight daily calorie deficit of about 500 kilocalories is ideal, which is roughly equivalent to a large portion of fries that you'd better not eat as a reward after training, as it could diminish the positive effect of your efforts. A good tip for beginners is to start with two to three sessions of 30 to 45 minutes of jogging per week. This approach is gentler on your joints and tendons, allowing you to adjust to the strain, unlike a once-weekly intense 90-minute workout that can lead to overuse injuries. By regularly running at a talking pace, you create a solid foundation for your fitness while also enhancing your well-being. Another interesting approach is running on an empty stomach. This isn't about abstaining from alcohol, but about running in the morning on an empty stomach. In this state, your body directly taps into fat reserves, meaning it specifically targets your fat deposits and uses them as an energy source. However, it's important not to overdo it. To optimally prepare your body for a fasting run, you should have a protein-rich and low-carb meal the evening before. This diet ensures that your body has the necessary nutrients to work efficiently during the run. A glass of cold water or black coffee before the run can also be helpful as it can boost your metabolism, similar to a turbo that accelerates your fat burning. Nevertheless, you should make sure that fasting runs don't last longer than 60 minutes to avoid overexertion and possible negative effects on your body. By following these guidelines, you can make the most of fasting runs while supporting your fitness goals. Now, let's talk about the often underestimated strength training. Muscles are like little ovens that continuously burn calories, even when you're resting. This means that the more muscle mass you have, the higher your basal metabolic rate is, which helps you lose weight or maintain your weight without constantly having to watch your calorie intake. A strong core is especially important as it serves as a stable foundation. A well-trained core not only improves your running performance, but also helps prevent injuries. You don't have to look like a bodybuilder to benefit from strength training, because even a few targeted exercises can make a significant difference in your fitness and performance. By regularly incorporating strength training into your program, you not only strengthen your muscles, but also promote your overall health and well-being. The key to success lies in variety. Combine talking pace runs, HIT, and strength training into a balanced workout program that works like a perfect fitness cocktail, helping you activate different muscle groups and boost your endurance. An example of a weekly plan might look like this. On Monday, you could start with a 45-minute talking pace run, followed by 30 minutes of strength training on Tuesday. Wednesday would be a rest day, which is important for recovery so that your body can recover. On Thursday, you could then plan for 30 minutes of HIT, followed by another 45-minute talking pace run on Friday. Saturday would be another strength training day, and on Sunday, you could do an easy 60-minute run or active recovery like walking or yoga. Remember, you should train in a way that makes you look forward to the next session. 
it's important to note that this is just an example that some may find underwhelming, while others may feel intimidated by it. Your personal training program may look entirely different and should be tailored to your individual needs, goals, and fitness level. Find the combination that works best for you and enjoy the process to stay motivated and engaged. Now you know how to train smart and effectively. Remember that the regularity of your training is more important than just intensity. Continuous training, even if moderate, leads to better results in the long run than rare but extremely strenuous sessions. If you keep your routine varied, not only will your motivation remain high, but your body will also be challenged in various ways. This variety helps you achieve a balanced level of fitness and avoid injuries from overloading individual muscle groups. The talking pace plays a special role in this. It allows you to improve your endurance while also building a solid foundation for more intense workouts. By running or training at this pace, you strengthen your cardiovascular system and prepare your body gently for higher loads. This way, you build up the fitness you need to get the most out of your HIT or strength training sessions. So, whenever you feel like you might be overexerting yourself, slow down a bit and find your talking pace to maintain sustainable training. The combination of talking pace, HIT, and strength training forms an unbeatable team that helps you achieve your fitness goals while improving your overall well being. The more regularly you include these elements in your training program, the more effective your training will be. If you follow these tips, you can train smarter and more efficiently while also creating a sustainable and balanced fitness routine. That's all for today. We hope you're feeling inspired and ready to take your fitness journey to the next level. Remember, the best workout is the one you actually do. So find a routine that works for you and stick with it. Your future self will thank you.